And in another story that's getting a lot of attention, an exonerated prisoner is now free after serving almost 15 years on murder and manslaughter convictions. Alstery Simon is now seeking justice. The former inmate is suing those who he says framed him to secure the release of the real killer. Simon's $40 million lawsuit names several defendants, including Northwestern University and a former journalism professor. James Sotos is the attorney representing Alstery Simon and he joins us from Illinois. James, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Now let's get all of our viewers caught up to this story. How is it that Alstery Simon came to be convicted and jailed for this double mur murder? Well, what the complaint alleges is that in their zeal to free Anthony Porter on a double murder that he had committed in 1982, that representatives of Northwestern University's Medill School of Journalism fabricated false evidence against Alstery Simon and essentially framed him for the crimes that Anthony Porter had committed. And the fact is, James, that uh, Alstory uh, confessed, he said this was a coerced confess, but even gave a jailhouse interview for this, uh, for, for this crime. Why did he feel so com compelled to give these, what he says now, false statements? Well, Al Alstory Simon's confession had all the hallmarks of a false confession, ironically, um, by applying the standards that Northwestern itself uses in determining whether confessions are coerced. Um, an investigator named Paul Cialino burst into his home early in the morning, misrepresented himself to be a Chicago police officer, displayed a gun, uh, told Al Story Simon that they had evidence against him that was going to result in him uh, winding up on death row for this murder. They showed him a videotape of an actor who pretended to be a witness to the crime and um, essentially convinced him that he was, the Chicago police were on their way to his house to arrest him and that if he didn't make a statement saying that he did the crimes in self-defense, that uh, within the next half hour that he was going to end up in the custody of the Chicago police and he would never again see the light of day. And James, it's just remarkable what led to coercing this confession. Uh, this was the, the uh, efforts of the Innocence Project trying to exonerate Anthony Porter, who is the actual murderer, we do, we do believe. Uh, and it was the instructions that the professor gave to the students that might have caused this whole thing to go awry. Explain what th those little fine details in the words that he used, how that made all the difference. Well, we, we believe that's exactly what happened here, that, uh, in fact, the uh, Medill School of Journalism, which really wasn't a journalism class at all, it was functioning as a rogue investigative agency, uh, used, the ver in fact, instructed um, their students and the investigator to use the very same types of tactics that they had decried in the police in order to convince Al Story Simon to confess to a crime that he didn't commit. Let me just ask you this very quickly. I want to talk about the journalism professor as well as the private investigator. But before I get there, why is Al Story suing the university? Why does, is the university culpable in this injustice? Well, the university itself was on notice of the tactics that, North, that, that its uh, investigator and professor had been using as far back as 1997. A former dean of the School of Journalism approached the administration and said, you know, these guys are using unethical tactics and something needs to be done about it. The class either has to be stopped or it has to be fixed. But this school's, um, the, excuse me, the investigative journalism class's exploits had brought so much fame, uh, funding and recognition to the university that they turned a blind eye to what they had been told about what was going on and essentially replaced this dean of the School of Journalism with another individual who continued to allow those flourishes. Th those I'm having tactics. difficulty hearing you, James. Can you still hear me? I can hear you, yes. I can read your lips and, and see that you said you can hear me, but I can't hear you anymore. Oh. Uh, okay, there we go. Now you popped back up. One, very, one last quick question. The, sure. the journalism professor, David uh, Protest, as well as the private investigator, Paul Cialino, are, are they vulnerable to any criminal charges now? Um, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. When the state's attorney dismissed the case against Al Story Simon, she said that the statute of limitations had run on charges of obstruction of justice, which otherwise may have been brought against Cialino and protests. All right. James Sotos, thank you so much for bringing this story to us. We do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And this is Arise America.